Hello, I'm Stephen Rawlson. This week we'll be doing a comparison between traditional and modern companies. To begin, the modern company that I chose was Hulu and they were founded in 2007. They are a live TV and streaming service and they have no physical stores. GameStop, on the other hand, is a traditional type of store founded in 1984 and they are a video game retailer. Though they have physical stores, they're also moving towards a more digital movement. So here's an agenda for today. We'll be doing a compare and contrast uh, on each company through the value of this one that each company adheres to, um, their customers and market segmentation, how they build relationships and loyalty with customers, their use of AI or big data and marketing, key events that led to digital transformation, the status of digital maturity, use of analytics that lead to personnel decision-making, and what I learned. So to begin, we'll talk about the value discipline each company adheres to. For Hulu, they kind of uh, lead towards the operational excellence uh, platform where they separate themselves from other streaming services such as Netflix. They uh, provide different plan options such as having ads or no ads. Obviously, having ads um, will cost less than having no ads. And they also provide live t television. They also have partnership deals with Spotify and Disney. Um, we'll get into the Spotify thing uh, a little bit later, but I know Disney just took almost full control of Hulu, which I found pretty interesting. Um, so for GameStop, they excel a lot in customer intimacy. They have in-store and online purchasing options, and they're attempting to lean towards the digital age in order to connect to a larger market. And according to their website, more games are sold per console than any other retailer. At GameStop. So um, customers and market segmentation. So they both are not like expanded fully internationally. Um, I know GameStop is a little bit more than Hulu. Hulu is only based in the US, but they plan to move internationally in 2021 according to Disney. Um, they target a large market for TV watchers and they have different deals to help connect with all viewers. And there are certain deals such as college deals with Spotify. So I know if you're in college and you get a good Spotify deal, you also get free Hulu with that Spotify deal. So they have pretty good deals if you go hand in hand with other companies. And I think they have one with Disney Plus as well. For GameStop, geographically, they are, they are uh, located in US, Canada, Australia, and throughout Europe, which is pretty big. Um, and they typically just target gamers. Um, and the one thing that's special about them having the physical stores, a lot of people want to have that physical copy of a game. And it's special to a lot of people because it holds a little bit of a sentimental value. Relationships and loyalty with customers. So Hulu does not have a loyalty program, which I found on their website. There were a few complaints about that because people felt that they should be getting deals after, say, having Hulu for four years or so. Um, customers are allowed to request shows on their website, though, which I found pretty interesting. Um, requests for shows and movies need 100 votes, though, in order to be considered by Hulu. And this allows customers to become involved. So I think they do a pretty good job in that. GameStop just came out with their Power Up Rewards program. Um, there are two levels, one being a player, which is free, and the other one being a pro, which just provides more perks. I mean, there's a fee, but I think if you're an avid video gamer, it ends up working out for you. Um, the use of big data in marketing. So Hulu uses data based on people's watching habits. This started during the COVID-19 outbreak, and they use this data in seeing how people are using Hulu. According to an article I read, binge watching increased by 30% over the COVID outbreak, and news watching increased by 54% since the start of COVID-19. Um, this can help them provide what they want to use on Hulu, what they want to provide to their viewers, whether it's increasing news or shows such as Friends or The Office that get more binge watching than others. Um, and they also provided a Hulu ad manager, which allowed for the ads to pop up in certain areas. So if Permanis is mainly located in Pittsburgh, more of their ads will appear in Pittsburgh areas than any other regions. Um, GameStop, they use data from the Power Up Rewards program. This provides recommendations, suggests trade and values to their customers, 
and they also have 55 million members since starting it 10 years ago. Um, members provide three times more sales than non-members, and members drive five times more profitability. You can see that GameStop is using the recommendations. The, um, they're using data based on how people are playing games. So if someone likes to buy a lot of shooting games, they'll use that data and say, you might like this game. Or someone likes sports games, they'll say, you like this game. And they'll use that data to provide recommendations to just trade in values to allow for their top uh, people who are, who are making them profits to uh, buy more games and enjoy, enjoy their use at GameStop more. A uh, key event that led to digital transformation. So Hulu, um, I found that the key event was the rise of Netflix. Hulu needed to differentiate themselves from their competitors. And so by doing that, they developed Hulu Streaming plus Live TV in 2017. Um, this type of access gave them something that Netflix did not provide. Um, like I said before, they, need, they, they, they were able to do something that other companies couldn't, which was doing the live TV and having the streaming, which is kind of like on demand, but it's just such a smoother app and it's so much cheaper than a lot of cable providers that most people, you can't go wrong if you want both. For GameStop, the event that really spoke out to me at least was the blockbuster seizing operations in 2010. Both these companies are very, very similar in how they handled things, um, how they how they handled their business. But starting in 2010, GameStop provided a new business model and operational models to handle the, uh, all this uh, this big situation of of digital of the digital world growing. Um, the development of the GTI, which was a new business new movement unit, sorry. Um, that provided them the ability to team up with IBM, which enhanced innovation and technology and really gave them a big advantage in the gaming industry to see how they could improve their business. Um, the ability to organize for digital maturity. So Hulu did a good job at utilizing data to analyze how customers are using Hulu. Um, also with the ad manager, the ad manager was very helpful because it placed those ads in the proper locations. This is crucial for COVID-19 with the increased activity and in viewing. So a lot of the small businesses who are trying to open back up but were struggling were able to do this through the ad manager. And GameStop, the, the GameStop Technology Institute, GTI, was able to utilize the IBM Open Cloud Platform to their advantage. Um, this creates in-store and online em environment with customers. And to, use, and to use this to enhance customer service and make better rewards program. Um, the use of analytics and personal decisions. Um, so Hulu, they set up these knock up, knockout questions. And these questions were very representative of the company values. Um, the sad thing about this is poor answers immediately eliminate a candidate from being even considered. And sometimes these questions were on the application, sometimes they're interview, but if you had a poor answer, then you could be immediately eliminated. Um, and this shows how much uh, Hulu really cares about their core values of the company. Um, for GameStop, it was primarily interview-based. Um, they questioned mainly on the knowledge of gaming, and um, there wasn't really any use of data analytics in their hiring process, and I believe not with Hulu either. Um, which I found pretty interesting. So what did I learn? Um, essentially, what I would use from these companies is uh, GameStop's overall ability to grow and adapt uh, with digital transformation and understanding why Blockbuster failed. It was quite impressive how GameStop was able to stay as a traditional company, but also move in like a more hybrid direction of having digital and a physical presence in the, um, in the market. Um, and the, using the GTI to enhance digital maturity, um, online purchasing options, and um, yeah, they just did a very good job. What I would avoid is the use of analytics and personal decision making. Neither company did a very good job of this, especially who was knockout questions. Although I didn't think it was a bad idea, there's too much power in the, in the decision making process on just the knockout questions. Um, I think GameStop just did a little bit better. Um, on this than, than who it is. And finally, these are my references. Um, if you have any questions, I, I appreciate it. Um, thank you for your time, guys, and take care.